We live in a world where our favorite movies are sold to us over and over again. Toys, shampoo, kitchenware, hardware, underwear. And now you're selling it. You're selling it. But if there's one thing that I cannot resist, it's the board games. Wow! B12. You could find the most basic examples in the toy aisle of your local supermarket with reskinned versions of Clue and Monopoly, but that's not what I'm talking about. Do not pass go! Do not collect $200! I want the games that go beyond simply changing Park Place to Stark Tower. The games that become an adaptation of the film itself, that utilize a specific game style to fit the themes and characters of the source material. So, we're going to take a look at some incredible board game adaptations to uncover exactly how they transform films into an immersive tabletop experience. It's time to ask, what's the difference? Cardboard edition, and sometimes plastic. Film adaptations of any kind fall into a few different categories. When a book becomes a movie, there can be the hyper-faithful translations from page to screen, or the looser, just take the title and theme adaptations. Changing a film into a board game is no different, and game makers are faced with the challenge of how to best represent a film on the tabletop. All right, I'm in. Firstly, great tabletop adaptation requires a game style that reflects the themes of the film. So, when Andrew Haught adapted James Cameron's Aliens, he needed a type of game that could emulate both the action and horror elements, as Ripley and a squad of Marines investigate an outpost overrun with aliens who would love nothing more than to take you back to their nest and impregnate you with their spawn. Sure, it's tempting to turn this sci-fi classic into a twisted rendition of Operation, but Hot instead harnesses the movie's overwhelming sense of dread in his adaptation, Aliens Another Glorious Day in the Core, a cooperative survival game that has players attempt to compete missions while fighting off endless hordes of xenomorphs and fending off exhaustion in the claustrophobic halls of Hadley's Hope. Right away, players are able to stock up on weapons and gear from a generous deck of equipment. But like the film, the gear only lasts so long. The equipment doubles as the endurance deck, which dwindles whenever you use your weapons or overcome hazards. If you don't pace yourself, if you don't stay frosty, then you will start to lose cards permanently. You got four pulse rifles with about 50 rounds each. That ain't so good. The game effectively creates tension with the exhaustion mechanic, but then cranks up the horror by way of another iconic technique from the film, the blips. Pull your team out, Gorman. In the film, motion trackers pick up xenomorphs as they scurry around in the darkness. The repetitive pinging creates tension as the marines move closer in proximity to the source of the motion only to reveal ah! it's a small feral child. That is, until it's not. And boy is it not. The game hides its unseen xenomorphs in blip tokens that move slowly towards you, only to be flipped over once in your line of sight, revealing one to five aliens underneath, thus perfectly encapsulating the horrible knowledge that whatever is moving towards you may be far more terrifying than you could predict. All of these mechanics serve to instill the nihilism from the film. We haven't even mentioned the motion tracker cards, which can result in surprise ambushes, which all goes to prove that no matter what you do, nothing will stop the alien onslaught. And so, like Ripley, Hicks, and the rest, you will have to fight smart and watch your supplies long enough to escape with all of your characters intact. Otherwise... Game over, man! Game over! After matching the IP to a fitting game style, the next phase of a true adaptation is the characters. You can replace simple game pieces with molds of a movie's characters, that's a given, but some games require the player to really know the character from the film, digging deeper into the psychology and physicality through gameplay that elevates the translation. <laughs> In many ways, Jurassic Park is a perfect movie for a board game. The film's plot provides plenty of conflict and problem solving, from navigating dino-infested landscapes to getting the park back online. But the designers chose to hone in on character psychology in a head-to-head -head conflict between Muldoon and the Velociraptors. Welcome to the miniatures battle game, Unmatched. The conflict between game warden Robert Muldoon and the Velociraptors hits on the film's central theme of hubris, starting with the very first scene, where Muldoon directs the engine workers as they transfer the alpha female to her habitat, resulting in a deadly workplace accident. The scene effectively shows the consequences of attempting to control the uncontrollable, and thus foreshadows the chaos to come. Meanwhile, on the tabletop, players can not only play as Muldoon, but also the real star of that dangerous opening scene, the Velociraptors themselves. However, the game draws from the film's characters to create totally different playing styles for each. Muldoon relies on setting traps and corralling his prey with gunfire, like the experienced game hunter he is. His engine employees act as easily devoured cannon fodder, which drives home Muldoon's trauma from that opening scene. 
On the other hand, the Velociraptors play fast and deadly. The cards allow the Raptors to attack and immediately move, while some cards allow a Raptor to suddenly appear right next to the opposing fighter, creating surprise flanking positions that are rewarded with extra damage. Clever girl. In this way, the Raptor gains advantage by utilizing the strategy laid out by Dr. Grant in the film. You are alive when they start to eat you. For a movie that's bursting with big, iconic set pieces, Unmatched instead delivers a game that fuses character psychology into the mechanics, distilling the man versus nature conflict of the film into a quick fire slugfest. Life, uh, finds a way. But sitting across the table from nuanced characters are the broad archetypes. Bond. James Bond. Films like Aliens and Jurassic Park, while dealing with plenty of tropes themselves, ultimately trade in very specific themes. The 007 franchise, on the other hand, is not one known for its well-rounded characters, but rather for iconic set pieces, outrageous archetypes, and a secret agent who, for the most part, is a blank slate prepped for any viewer to step into his shoes, live out the male fantasy of saving the world, getting the girl, and looking damn cool while he does it. And so, Legendary, a James Bond deck building game, features cards categorized by those iconic elements. A villainous mastermind with an evil scheme and a gang of henchmen, and a hero who sports cutting edge spy gear and an entourage of allies in order to carry out his missions. You'll draw it from Q Branch for the rest of your equipment in the morning. Up to five players can each play as Bond in one of four films from four different eras of 007. Sean Connery's innuendo-laden classic Goldfinger, Roger Moore's campy western The Man with the Golden Gun, Pierce Brosnan's Bond for a Progressive Age in Goldeneye, and finally Daniel Craig's Bond origin story Casino Royale. To win, you must confront the criminal mastermind and stop their evil scheme by strategically building a deck of allies, equipment, and, of course... The name's Bond. Yeah, yeah, we know. James, James Bond. Bond. The villain's deck is created using a stacking method that plays out the scenes in chronological order, offering a bird's eye view of the film's story structure. Starting with the exposition in Act 1, which in the case of Goldfinger establishes Bond is hot on a mission and hot in the sack. Oh. To infiltrate the enemy in Act 2, Bond sometimes wears a disguise, like the third nipple from the man with the golden gun. Then of course there's the explosive disaster of Act 3, which in the film Goldeneye is all thanks to a ballpoint pen, and finally, the falling action that wraps up the narrative, such as the Vesper revelation from Casino Royale. You'll have to overcome these moments in order to keep the evil plan from progressing beyond your control and ending the game. I'm afraid your friend Mathis is really my friend Mathis. However, you must also confront a formidable mastermind before his deck runs out and he escapes. But each time you attack him, a card is revealed to show his retaliation, since Bond rarely goes after a villain without taking a few licks himself, usually somewhere in the groin region. Is anything the matter? Just a slight stiffness coming on. Although the core formula of the Bond films has endured over the decades, it wouldn't be fair to say all Bond films are exactly the same. By choosing a deck-building system, game designers are able to introduce specific movie-related mechanics by writing them directly onto the cards. For instance, Goldeneye's deck is the only one with the loyalty to the mission mechanic, which gives bonuses to the players for each successful mission in their victory pile, referencing one of the central themes of the film wherein Bond must choose where his loyalties lie. 07's loyalty was always to the mission. Casino Royale explores Bond's evolution from just a well-trained agent to a cold-blooded spy with a license to kill. So the game introduces the double O status mechanic, which awards bonuses for having killed a villain on a given turn. We wanted to question him, not to kill him! This deck builder looks to the Bond formula as its frame, but utilizes the power of card text to craft specialized decks in order to fit any 007 film from any era, no matter the story elements. In this way, Legendary lets you relive the most iconic moments from across the franchise in order to be the best Bond you can be. Dames are incorrigible. But what if a half century's worth of pop culture is too vast? What if you want to experience the film's smaller plot points, beat by beat? Enter the one versus many strategy game, Die Hard, the Nakatomi Heist. Come on to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Part of Die Hard's enduring success as a film is the relatively small sandbox it plays in. One cop stuck in one building versus a crew of bad guys with crystal clear goals to accomplish for each side. John saving his wife and Hans and co pulling off the heist. We'll be sitting on a beach earning 20%. 
In the game, one player takes the role of the fly in the ointment, John McClane, while up to three others play as the thieves who spend the game trying to crack the vault code and escape with the money. The game board is even split into three acts like it's structurally perfect source material, with Act 1 taking place at the film's inciting incident. As McLean, you will follow in the film's bare footsteps, from finding shoes that don't fit, tossing a body out of the 32nd floor window, befriending Sergeant Powell, with the final act taking place on the roof, where you'll have to corral the hostages down the stairs with gunfire, base jump with a fire hose, and ultimately face off with Hans. Hans! Within those acts, you'll find nods to the film hidden in the fight mechanics, as you relive McLean's sweaty jabs and well-placed gunfire through a hand of cards. Outgunned, you'll utilize air vents to quietly advance on the board, as well as making use of the furniture to give them a defensive boost when taking enemy fire. All of this highlights the simple, grounded nature of the film's action. While McLean tries to complete the objectives and avoid losing valuable cards to successful enemy hits, the thieves will have to break into the vault by recreating sets of numbers, as a way of adapting the plot of the vault hacker in the film. Bet your ass I wish to proceed. Completing objectives and slowing McLean down will buy them time to crack all the vault locks and blow the roof to escape with the cash. The Nakatomi Heist is a game that makes simply shooting out a pane of glass or landing a solid punch so satisfying, and a faithful adaptation that will give you the movie's plot beat by beat every time. But what if your intention isn't to play a faithful retelling, but to create a story of your own, like a cardboard-laden piece of fan fiction? That's no moon. While Star Wars isn't short on board games, Rebellion uses its massive box of goodies to give you control over your own Star Wars story in the form of a sprawling cat-and-mouse strategy war game, wherein a group of outgunned rebels must inspire the galaxy to revolt against the Empire, while the Empire searches for the hidden rebel base. The original trilogy relies on a tight three-act structure to tell its story, but the game allows for much more freedom. The narrative time is represented by a track that not only determines at what point the rebels inspire the galaxy, but also allows players to recruit characters, giving you some choice in who your protagonists are. What about that one? Those characters will go on to complete missions, forging backstories and strengths. So while Han's character in the film is a reluctant hero, you could feasibly make him a super spy who seduces intel out of Imperial units. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? If Rebellion had taken a page out of the James Bond game, the objectives and missions would have been direct callbacks to the iconic moments in the films. But the game has you inspire the galaxy through general victories such as sabotage, rescues, combat, and diplomacy. In this way, you're able to give credit to the accomplishments of your cast within the new narrative you've created for them. <laughs> On the flip side, the Imperial player is also given tools to forge their own reign of tyranny. Where is the rebel base? To buy yourself time to find the rebels, you wield the power of fear to keep the galaxy in line. This ranges from developing a weapon capable of wiping whole systems off the board, or even turning a rebel leader to the dark side, which opens up all sorts of gruesome plot lines for you to develop. The hate is swelling in you now. Use it. I feel something terrible has happened. Better luck next time, Mon Mothma. When it comes down to it, Rebellion is a strategy war game, but with the combination of missions, objectives, and preference of leaders, players are able to fashion a new take on the classic sci-fi epic that will stay fresh over multiple plays. We did it! So, next time you plan a game night with your fellow movie lovers, consider engaging in a title that doesn't just look like a movie, but brings it to life right there on the table, through a fitting play style with characters that operate like their movie counterparts in order to unfold a narrative for everyone to enjoy. Oh, and may the best player win. <laughs>